Hi, welcome to PT Dan's educational videos. Today we're going to be talking about creatine and how creatine causes increase in strength and permanent muscle gains in the human body. First, let's have a chat about different fuel sources. Our body's number one fuel source is actually alcohol. Secondly, um, apart from that, of course, when it comes to our macronutrients produced in the human body, the first preferred fuel source is sugar, carbohydrates, and then we're looking at stored body fat, and then worst case scenario, our body will actually break down protein in our human body, especially from our muscle tissue, and use that as our last resource. Now, all that is used to produce what we call ATP. So let's have a look at what ATP is. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Uh, triphosphate meaning an adenosine molecule with three phosphate molecules. So adenosine triphosphate, tri meaning three. Now what happens is, with this adenosine triphosphate, one of those molecules breaks away, which is shown over here. And when this one phosphate molecule breaks away, it causes an electrical spark. Now that's what actually creates energy. When that one phosphate molecule breaks away and creates energy, this adenosine triphosphate now doesn't have three molecules, it has two molecules. So adenosine triphosphate now becomes adenosine diphosphate. Now when this occurs and all the triphosphate molecules break into diphosphate molecules, um, that energy creates a muscle contraction, a, a strength and powerful muscle contraction. It gives us uh, enough contraction to give maximal intensity for only up to 10 seconds. So let's say a 100 meter runner explodes off the mark, our body doesn't have time to break down uh, fuel sources into sugar to be used in the human body. It doesn't have time to break down fats. It needs something instant. It needs something at a cellular level. Another great example is when you put your finger on a hot stove. If you put your finger on a hot stove, you need to quickly move it away. Your body doesn't have time to break down fuels and, and deliver it into your mitochondria and go through the Krebs cycle, etc. So your body needs something at an instant level. It needs something instantly to quickly move your hand away. So it needs something at a cellular level. And this is where this energy source really comes into play. So if this continuously happens over 10 seconds, obviously we're going to have none left. So our body needs to start putting it back together again. So what happens is this needs to be recycled. A adenosine triphosphate molecule needs to be put back together again so it can be reused. So what does that is creatine. So creatine is what's used that puts the adenosine phosphate, the adenosine diphosphate, back into adenosine triphosphate. So it's actually called the creatine phosphate molecule. Um, and this is why this is called the ATP PC system. The adenosine triphosphate phosphate creatine system. So the so what happens is the just say this was a pen for example. The creatine phosphate molecule will come and it will attach itself to this phosphate molecule um, and that's what helps deliver it and connect it back together again um, and then the adenosine diphosphate becomes adenosine triphosphate. Now by supplementing your body with creatine, um, this helps replenish and add more creatine phosphate molecules in your bloodstream which allows the adenosine diphosphate to be turned into adenosine triphosphate at a faster speed, which gives us a lasting fuel source at a faster speed. Now this is the fuel source used for maximal uh, muscle activity, muscle contraction. So the, the creatine helps to recycle the energy source responsible for maximum strength. And this is why when supplementing creatine, we, our strength goes through the roof. And that's what's really important when it comes down to training and getting good results. The other main important thing that creatine does, um, apart from putting this all back together again, is the creatine itself is found inside the cell. So let's have a little look at that right now. So if this is the cell, creatine is found inside the cell. And it's stored inside the cell. Now what happens is that when creatine builds up inside the cell, it does draw water into the cell. 
So this is where all the water externally gets drawn into the cell. The cell blows up like a balloon and those cells is what makes our entire body. So when those cells in our muscle tissue increase in size, it in our muscle tissue increases in size. And when this occurs, we get stronger. When we get stronger, we can actually lift a much heavier weight and produce more muscle fibers that are permanent gains. So when people say, oh, you get off your creatine and then you just shrink. Yes, this water will now end up leaving your cell and your cell will perhaps shrink just a little bit. But during that time that you've had that creatine inside your cell, you have been so much stronger for that six, eight weeks that you've been on your creatine that you have still gained permanent gains out of it. So it's still worth taking a creatine. It's like taking six steps forward and only one step back. So it's important that um, we remember that, that creatine isn't something where, like um, a lot of other supplements you can take, where you just uh, gain size and then you lose your size, and then you have to stay on your supplement in order to uh, keep the results going. Creatine causes permanent gains. So we've now spoke about how creatine creates an energy source so you can train harder and you can become stronger. Uh, we've now looked at how that creatine increases cell volume. Now, what's really important about this that we didn't talk about is water retention. People think that creatine causes water retention. It does not. This water outside here is water retention. But creatine doesn't cause water to be retained outside your cell. Creatine causes water to be retained inside your cell. Because this is where your creatine is. So the water out here is what we call extracellular water. And extracellular water is what we call water retention. The water that we retain inside our cell is called intracellular water. And that intracellular water inside your cell is not water retention. So when you see a volumization occurring in your muscle tissue, that's causes from the water inside your cell. But when you bloat and you see excess weight coming up and you see all your muscle fibers start to smooth out, then that's what's caused by water retention. So there's a difference between the two. You'll, and you'll notice when you get use creatine, you can see your muscle fibers coming out. You can see your size coming on. But when you use drugs such as uh, steroids, such as um, uh, DECA, DECA increases water retention and lubrication in your joints. And when you use DECA, the steroid, you'll be able to see all the muscle fibers start to smooth out. So that's the difference between water retention and intracellular water that creatine causes. The last thing I want to talk about is how it, uh, creatine can be used and the doses. So what we normally do is to go through a loading phase. So we just use creatine monohydrate on its own. Uh, have one week, so seven days going through a loading phase. And this loading phase is where you overload your body with creatine, so your body's natural stores such as kidneys, in your kidneys and liver, uh, build up a, a storage capacity to hold your creatine. So 20 to 25 grams per day. Now, you do this for seven days. Once that seven days is done and you've gone through your loading phase, now all you need to do is maintain the saturation of that creatine in your body. So you, you go through four to eight weeks with just having five grams a day. Now the problem with this is that a lot of that creatine is stored in your kidneys. And because it's stored in your kidneys, your kidneys are in a state of overload. What happens now is that your kidneys can't flush everything out of your system very efficiently. So it's important to be able to help your kidneys as much as you possibly can. The number one thing you need to be doing is drinking a lot of water, especially since your body will now need to store more water inside your cells. Remember how we just spoke about. So not only do you need more drink more water to uh, store that water inside your cells and volumize your cells, but you need to drink a lot of water now to be able to help your kidneys uh, detoxify and cleanse your body. So that's the, the loading phase. 
Now the other way we can do it is to help you create and get into your cell straight away without having to go through your loading phase. So this is how what we call an insulin spike. The way an insulin spike works is quite simple. When you eat sugar and the sugar levels go up in your blood, your body needs to bring the sugar levels back down again. So what your body does is it produces a hormone called insulin. And what insulin does is helps the absorption of not only sugar, but everything in your body, including creatine. So that's your cell. What you do is you mix your creatine with a carbohydrate such as non-acidic fruit juice. And when you have that juice, your sugar levels will go up in your blood. Your body now knows that sugar isn't meant to be that high in your blood, so your body will produce a hormone insulin to bring your sugar levels back down. The way insulin works is, insulin will attach itself, so pretend this pen is insulin, it will attach itself to the sugar, and it will deliver the sugar to the cell. It will knock on the cell's door and say, hey, open up, I've got a VIP here. The cell will open its, it up, open its doors and it will deliver the sugar inside the molecule. If you don't have insulin, that sugar won't be able to get inside your cell. So what happens is, if you drink creatine with juice, your sugar levels go up. When your sugar levels go up, your body produces insulin. And when your body produces insulin, that insulin helps open the door. So not only can your sugar now enter, but that sugar now takes your creatine with it inside your cell. So if you just take 10 grams of creatine pre or post workout with a fruit juice or a high carbohydrate source, you don't need to go through a loading phase. Now there's a debate right now going on about which method, whether you need to go through a loading phase or whether you just need to create an insulin spike uh, which one is a better use? This is something that I suggest that you try out on your own. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit more about this video and all different types of creatine, creatine use, how it uses for energy sources, how it creates uh, volumization, the difference between intracellular water and extracellular water, and the different methods used to absorb creatine in your body. And uh, use creatine, definitely. It's, uh, it's apart from your protein and your amino acids, I honestly believe that your creatine is your number one supplement uh, to increase cell and muscle volume. Talk to you soon.